Hey guys, good evening. Thank you very much for joining today. It's eight o'clock. Así que welcome everyone to your class. And we're going to continue with the topics, right, that we have um, been discussing. Remember that some of the things probably look a little bit familiar because some of you had questions, you know, before, right? We uh, got to this part, which is section five. And uh, we're going to clarify still some uh, things, you know, regarding the topics that we haven't covered, okay? But as you know, we are going to pass the attendance as well. Just bear with me. I'm going to open it up right now. Remember that uh, this coming Thursday, we're finishing, right? Our three advanced, right? Three. Today is section number 14. So two more sessions and you will be ending or finishing, right? Your level. So get ready for the next one. I hope that all of you, or, you know, have already, well, I, I, I think, let's put it like that. I think most of you have already sent the documentation for the next level. So that means that that specific position has been, let's say, reserved right for you. So let's see, Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Present teacher. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Um, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Here. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Jenny Lisset Campos Martínez. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Hi, present teacher. Thank you. And hi. <laughs> Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. And Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. María Susana Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Marta Estela, Marta Ruth Enríquez Reyes. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present. Thank you. Nady Ibis Mendez Alveño. Mende, me, Nady Ibis Mendez Alveño. Eh, Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Uh, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you. Jensi Marlene León López. Present teacher. Thank you. Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. And Ana Francisca says present, teacher. Ahorita, Francisca. I have a problem with my microphone, but I now I fit. I'm sorry I don't say uh, present. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll go ahead and register your attendance right now. So Ana Francisca and Claudia Marcela. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. There we go. Excellent. So thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with our class. Now, very quickly, we're going to have a 
a quick review, right, on one of the topics that I think it's very important for you to manage, okay, for you to have it handy, right, in case you need it, which is about giving recommendations and opinions, right? So this is part of the first intro video that we have in section five. And for me to be able to go over the review, I'm going to play the video, right? And we're going to listen to um, the intro video and then we're going to move to the review. So let me make sure I'm sharing the sound and I'm going to play it directly from the platform. Let's see. This is the introductory video in section five. So let's go ahead and watch. Very large and we're... Can you see and hear, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Great. So let's, yes. let's begin. Excellent. You're about to watch the very last video of this course. We hope you enjoy them. We suggest for you to keep on watching and practicing your language. Hi. I'm Kai Nagata. I'm a television journalist based here in Montreal, Canada, and I'm also a lifelong cyclist. Right now, cycling is getting more and more popular in Montreal, with 10% of all commuters getting to work by bike, like me, and city officials want that number to increase. More bicycles means more bicycle traffic, and that means sharing the road. There's lots of opinions about how pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers should act and interact in the city. Let's find out what people think. Is there anything Montreal could do to improve things for cyclists? Yeah, well, I think the city should try to expand the system of cycle paths. One thing I learned this morning is that one shouldn't drive against traffic, <laughs> because that's a problem. Sometimes there are corners uh, where drivers just cannot see you coming, and so you should really try to avoid driving against the traffic if possible. What advice do you have for cyclists in the city? Cyclists should have their own bike lane and drive towards the oncoming traffic, because they will be able to better see what the others parked cars are doing, whether they're driving or parked, the cyclists will have more control. What do you think drivers ought to do to help keep cyclists safe? Drivers should always check their rearview mirrors before opening their doors so that they don't hit a bicycle that's coming up behind them. Do you spend more time driving or riding a bike? Driving. What do you think Montreal could do to encourage cycling as an option for people? Uh, maybe education, maybe some restriction to driving downtown. So maybe making it harder for drivers. Right, right. that's the nature, the human nature. What advice would you give people who are cycling with children? There should be a law that says all children starting from age six should be educated on the rules of bicycling. What do you think of the idea of kids wearing bike helmets? I think they should, but a lot of them won't. What do you think the city could do to make cyclists even safer in Montreal? Um, I think it, it would be best if bicycles and buses were not on the same street. Why do you think that? Because they're not compatible. The bus is very large and we're uh, very small and not protected, but we drive approximately the same speed or in the same path. What do you think cyclists should do to help keep themselves safe in traffic? Be more aware of both automobiles and pedestrians. I think uh, there are ways in which sometimes we cut corners in terms of moving through traffic, um, particularly moving traffic. I think cyclists need to be aware. What do you think when you see cyclists riding around with headphones in? I don't think it's the best idea. Uh, you have to be alert. Um, you don't often need your ears when you're cycling, but every once in a while you hear something that indicates something that you didn't see. And I, for safety reasons, that I think, you know, I'd like, to listen, I'd like to bike and listen to music too, but if you're going to do that, I think you should do that in a park. 
What advice do you have for cyclists in the city? People should never wear Walkmans or iPods or whatever uh, while they cycle because a lot of cycle safety has to do with listening. What advice would you give people who are cycling with children? I think cycling on the sidewalk is fine uh, with kids. Uh, I think most pedestrians are at ease with it. Uh, you know, look here, look at how wide this sidewalk is. If you have young children who are just learning to cycle, I don't see anything wrong with cycling on the sidewalk along here. What's your impression of Montreal as a city for cycling? Cyclists should take a bigger piece of the city and play a bigger role in the city. And I think that uh, drivers and even pedestrians should relax a bit about cyclists. Cyclists are good for cities. Wherever bikes and cars share the road, people are going to have opinions about how they ought to interact. Montreal is no exception, and we may not have solved all the problems yet, but we're working on it. I'm Kai Nagata, reporting from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Okay, very good guys. I hope you were able to listen to part of the video. And as you could see, well, as you could see in here, right, they were given their opinions, right? As we were discussing before, whenever we want to give our opinion regarding a law or something that is being, you know, um, considered, right, we can go ahead and use these expressions. Okay, so given recommendations, it's something that all of us do, right? As you could see from the video, they were talking about cyclists, right? And how they want to implement that in the city of Montreal, right? And different people were given their opinions using the structures that you see on the screen, right? So there are two things that I would like just to um, highlight right from the um, from the topic, and that is that we have two situations, as we said before, right? When we think something is a good idea, meaning not a, not necessary or shouldn't be an obligation, right? We use those three particular expressions, right? We can use should be required, shouldn't be allowed, or should be allowed, because actually you can use it in positive and negative form, right? For example, one of the person says, uh, or one of the people say, say, said in this case, right? Cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Now, think about this, for this particular person, this is a good idea. Cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. But for example, if you ask me, Marcelo Ortiz, probably for me, yes, it is a good idea, but actually I think it's something that is absolutely necessary. So what does that mean? That in my case, probably if I say something like that, I would say cyclists, right? must be required to wear a helmet. Why, Marce? Well, because I think that is a tool that can help save your life, right? If you fall, if you are hit by a car or, you know, uh, by a truck, etc., that helmet is going to protect your head, therefore, you know, your brain, right? So here we have to consider, right, if something for me, it's a good idea, or if I think that is absolutely necessary. And what else? Well, if I think, you know, something is um, a good idea, we have the three expressions. We said, should be required or shouldn't be required, should be allowed or shouldn't be allowed, ought to be required, ought to be required, ought to be, right? So that expression is not that common, but let's say it's very similar to have to. For example, you have to and parties at midnight. So kind of similar, you know, when it comes, when, when it comes to the usage, right? So ought to be required. And then must be passed when we're talking about laws, mustn't be permitted and has to be made and has got to be done, 
right? So those are expressions that we can use. So in the end, guys, to give recommendations, as you could see from the videos, right? You need models plus B plus the past infinitive, or in this case, the past participle of the verb. So we have, if I think something is a good idea, I use should or and auto. Auto, right? It's kind of, you know, weird, the pronunciation, it doesn't match, you know, the spelling, but it's auto. Now, if we think something is absolutely necessary, we use must or have to teach you about what is the difference between have to and have got to. Well, guys, here we have two things, okay, because have to, right, oops, I'm going to open it here too, and have got, those are two different expressions, right, that we use in English, but the difference is that have, have got or have got to, right, it's more common in the UK, right, so in British English, let's put it like that, okay, and then um, have to, it's more, you know, common in the United States, right? So that's the reason why you don't see it very often, right? And also have got, uh, can only be used, you know, in the present. For example, in the UK or in British English, they say, oh, I have got um, a car. I have got a new car instead of saying I have a new car, right? Etc. So that's just a difference, you know, between those two and must, right? Which means obligation. Now, think of three reasons. Well, let's go ahead and um, use uh, these phrases because we're moving to the breakout rooms for a moment and then you're going to go back with me to continue with the class. But I know that I've been like bombarding you right with, uh, with you know, information about the topics, but I think it's necessary for you to learn everything first. And then during the last week, we can move to the breakout rooms, okay? So guys, here we have different phrases. And remember that these phrases are very important for you. Why, teacher? Because they help you introduce your ideas, or in this case, offering a different opinion. For example, let's say that you see, you say something like, huh, well, you know what? I think imposing strict dress codes for students, right? It's a good idea. And then I can come and say, hmm, that sounds interesting, but I think, you know, students feel more comfortable with their own clothes. I don't think they like to wear uniforms. And then the other person can say, oh, that's not a bad idea. On the other hand, I feel that people can save money or students can save some money wearing uniforms. They don't have to, um, you know, wear their own clothes, etc. And then another person can come and say, hmm, you may have a point. However, I think students that wear their own clothes feel more comfortable with it. So I don't think students need, you know, to wear uniforms. So here we have three different phrases, right? I don't know if there are questions about, you know, these um, phrases to express a different opinion or to offer a different opinion. Questions about the vocabulary? No? Okay. Uh, that, what does labeling mean? Oh, labeling. Very mm, good. Labeling. Okay. Okay. Actually, label. Well, for example, when you go and buy a new um, shirt, or when you go and buy a new pair of shoes, they all they always have a label. You know, on the label you can find information about the product, the fabric they used to make that shirt. If it's cotton, if it's polyester, if it's lycra, etc. So that is as a noun. Right, but as a verb, when I label something or someone, I'm just given a characteristic or a name to that. So labeling in Spanish would be something like etiquetar, 
and label is etiqueta como nombre, right? So that is labeling. Thanks. You're welcome, Edu. Okay, excellent, guys. Any other question about the vocabulary words? No? Okay, no worries. Now, guys, what is going to be the activity about? Well, what I want you to do is to go to the breakout rooms. I'll try to put together three people, right? And you're going to discuss, okay, different ideas. So it's a group where think of three reasons for and three reasons against. So three reasons in favor and three reasons against each idea below. Then discuss your views as a group from form an opinion about each idea. So the first one is imposing strict dress codes for students. So what do you think? Teacher, but I mean, what am I gonna do? Well, you're going to use the phrases, all these phrases, and this, right? Should be required, shouldn't be allowed, etc. Es más, saben que just for you to have that handy, se la voy a pasar también acá para que no tengamos la dificultad de estar buscando, right? So no worries, I'll share it with you right now. Vamos a ver. Give me a sec. This is going to be one. Um, where are you? Here you are. Okay, so this one is going to be the first one that we need, and then this, okay. These ones, also you're going to use them. And what are the three ideas? Well, the three ideas that we have are this. Okay. So your questions will be, what do you think about imposing strict red codes for students? Or what do you think about labeling cities that have offensive lyrics? Or what do you think about paying teachers less when their students fail? Okay, oh, and you can include more, okay? Ah, okay, Ceci, no worries. Thank you for letting me know, okay? I'll consider that. If you want to see what I'm going to do, because I cannot leave you in the main room, you can join, but I'll let them know. Don't worry, okay? Thank you. So then, guys, you are going to use the phrases. I think it's a terrible idea. Students shouldn't be required, and then you continue with the rest, okay? Any question about the activity? Is it clear? Do you want me to give another example? Clear. Okay, it's clear. Very good. So let's move to the breakout rooms. Bear with me. I'm going to open them. So we are 29 minus 1. That's going to be 28. Let's do it like this. Okay. Wow. Give me a second. Way to create. And then what about 15? I think this one. Um, give me a sec. Let me see. Creo que se fueron. Ahora sí está. Okay, so now you can join any of the class. And let's work in pairs. Okay, let's work in pairs. And if you do not listen to your uh, classmate, just let me know. Okay. Ceci, le voy a cambiar a alguien más para que usted entre y. Yo sé que no puede ahorita, así que la vamos a mandar con dos personas más. That's going to be the sala 8. Ahí estamos. Okay, Marvin. I'm going to move him with Nate to number 7. There we go.
So click on accept, guys. Accept, accept, accept uh, breakout rooms so you can start, you know, working with your classmates. Okay, guys, just if you can help me. Si no van a participar, tal vez me dicen porque este, los compañeros creo que están esperando que ustedes entren. Entonces, si no van a participar, me avisan porque los puedo, ajá, los puedo mover. Ahí. Aquí en el chat me lo pueden decir para yo de aquí del chat ir considerando a quién voy a mover. Algunos sí ya están trabajando, pero no todos. Entonces, necesito saber quiénes sí van a poder ingresar para moverlos. Ay, licenciada, eh, yo me tocaba el salón número dos. Entré al salón número dos, pero de ahí me regresó nuevamente a la reunión principal. Ah, ok, vaya. Bueno, entonces ahorita quiero ver si lo puedo agregar de nuevo. Ok. Ajá, porque fíjense que me aparece como que sí está adentro. Vaya, entonces lo voy a mover a la sala uno. ¿Acepte ahorita? Ok, ahí está, ok, gracias. Vaya, ya sabe. Veamos. A mí también me, ap me apareció en una sala y me volvió a la aquí mismo. Vaya, ahorita voy. Give me a second. That's Estefanía, ¿verdad? Rebeca. Ok, voy, Rebeca. Um... Ahí está. Vea hoy. Okay, Rosa Maria, no worries. Okay, and Sandra, I totally understand. So just let me see if the rest are working. Yeah, I think I'm working with the ones that I have available, right? So at least most of you are already on it. Teníamos observaciones acerca, acerca de Should Be All Great, Student Be All Low, y Albert Should Be All Great. Okay, I'm I'm here, guys. Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, mm, give me an, an example, Nick. Yeah, but remember that that's for, for the homework. Remember that I shared three different images, right? So okay. right now you are going to use the three the the two options that you have, right? Can you move to the next image? Because I cannot share a screen and be here, you know, in the breakout room with you. So, can you move to the next to the next image? Okay, mm -hmm. please. Okay. Okay. 
so here you have the introduction, right? So you can use the, these three different phrases like, that sounds interesting, but I think, right? That's not a bad idea. Yeah. On the other hand, I feel, and you may have a point, however, I think. Now, this is a very polite way to offer a different opinion. Es como ofrecer una opinión diferente cuando yo no estoy completamente de acuerdo. No soy de acuerdo, pero de una forma muy amable y muy profesional y muy bien linda. educada, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahora se mueve a la siguiente imagen, por favor. Entonces, here it gives you the example. Aquí es el ejemplo de cómo lo vamos a trabajar. So mm -hmm. these are three different uh, situations. Number one, imposing strict dress codes for students. Number two, labeling cities that have offensive lyrics. And number three, paying teachers less when their students fail. So we have three different situations. What is your opinion? Right. So in this case, um, we have the first example and you're going to ask, hey, what do you think about imposing strict dress codes for students? And then, for instance, one of your classmates can say, oh, I think it's a terrible idea. Students shouldn't be required to wear a uniform to go to school. And then you continue. So this is the example. This is the way you are going to work it with your classmates. OK. Okay. Is it okay, or do you want an, do you want another example? Mm, this is successful is 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 very clear. Okay, fair. Y quiero ver de dónde vamos a tomar los 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 para hacer un ejercicio propio o sobre ese mismo ejemplo nosotros vamos a dar nuestras opiniones. Uh, there you have the three different situations: imposing a strict mm -hmm. dress code for students, mm -hmm. labeling CDs that have offensive mm -hmm. lyrics, and paying teachers less when their students okay. fail. So you're going to ask, okay. what do you think about okay. labeling CDs that have offensive lyrics, for example? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Thank. You. Okay, you're welcome. Any other mm -hmm. question, guys? Mm -hmm. what no, but mean? thank you. Okay. Yeah. You tenía una pregunta con esta palabra. Yes. What do you mean? Oh, How, we however, however, however means sin embargo. You may have a point, however, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. You're mm -hmm. very welcome. So I'm going to move to another room, but if you need anything, just call me and I'll be here, okay? Okay. Very good. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you doing here? Hello, teacher. Hi, do you have any questions? Um, no, I, I'm working and alone, but um, we have, we, no hemos discutido aún. <laughs> Ah, okay. Okay, so just try to um, share, right, uh, your sentences, like the ones that you, uh, I don't know who is the person that, oh, Rebecca, right? So, Rebecca, mm -hmm. uh, um, you are sharing your examples, right? So, that's excellent. So, remember that what you have to do is to use the okay. phrases that you have there. That sound interesting, but I think students, um, well, I think uniforms, right? Uniforms mm -hmm. can promote responsibility in students, or I think students should be less distracted, right? And they can concentrate in their classes or their subjects, etc. right? So mm -hmm. all what you have to do is use the phrases and the, uh, the previous image that I shared in the <laughs> WhatsApp group that contains the two different, you know, options to express. Uh, your ideas when you think it's a good idea and when you think it's it's necessary, right? So all that's all what you had to do, okay? Okay. Very good. So I'll, if you have questions, you can call me here to the breakout rooms and I'll be 
I'll be back unless you know um, you want to continue working alone. I will leave you there, but just let me know if you need something, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Lyrics. What? Uh, what is the second? Uh, let me see. Let me see. My. Okay. The second question is: Labeling CVs, companies that have of offensive offensive lyrics. Etiquetar CVs, o sea, como que tengan eh, cosas ofensivas. Mm. What, what do you think about that? I think that eh, now the world, eh, the music is very different for eh, 10 years ago because eh, you can hear to this eh, finger Paul Bunny. It's a it's a terrible it's a terrible singer because in the lyric only say for the human as object sexual no is not the lyric is is a terrible yes. I think that the singer is not singer because it's very offensive for the people. Okay. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Very, okay, very good. You are expressing your opinion, Carlos, and that's, uh, Jose Carlos, that's excellent. How would you use that information? How would you express what you just said, but in a way that you can use the, um, the given recommendations and opinions phrases? For example, you can say something like, you know, um, that's not a bad idea right? That's not a bad idea. On the other hand, I feel, you know, the type of music that this singer um, sings, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. should be, uh, shouldn't be permitted, right, on the radios, for example, or something like, oh, that sounds, that sounds interesting, because Eliu just told you, you know what, uh, what do you think about labeling CDs that have offensive lyrics? You can say something like, oh, that sounds interesting. But I think um, these CDs, mm, let me see, should be sold to uh, adults or people over 18 years old, for example, right? not to adolescents, not to kids. So you can go ahead and offer a, your opinion by introducing it with the phrases that you have on screen and then using the given recommendations and opinions op options, right? A, another example could be um, you may have a point. However, I think um, kids, you know, mustn't be permitted to listen to this type of lyrics or music, right? Or I think parents should be required or something like, I'm going to give you the whole phrase. You know what? That sounds interesting, but I think parents should be required to supervise, right? Their kids mm -hmm. or the music your kids or adolescents, you know, listen to. Okay, so that was perfect, Jose Carlos. All what you have to do is to use the phrase and use the options that we have, which is models plus B plus plus infinitive, should, ought to, and must and have got to. Okay, do, I mean, do you have questions or is it a little bit more um, clear, right, when it, when it comes to this topic? Questions? The teacher is clear. 
Excellent, very good. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to call you from the main room, okay? Okay, thank you, teacher. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You, okay, bye. Okay, guys, uh, your uh, classmates are about to join us in this main room because some of them were working together. I couldn't visit all of them. No los pude visitar a todos, pero algunos de ellos sí los visité. Okay, so let's wait for the rest. Okay, very good guys. Just let's wait for the rest. Ahí vienen ya los demás compañeros. Solo démosle un momentito porque hay unos que quizás todavía están terminando sus ideas, ¿verdad? Entonces, let's see. I think I'm missing three, four, five, six people still in the breakout rooms. Wait, see, ya están todos acá. <laughs> Let me check. Yep. Okay, very good. So welcome back, everyone. Thank you very much for working with this activity. Let's move on to the screen that I was sharing with you. Okay, very good. So guys, I would like to listen to some ideas, okay? And what about the first one? And 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 actually I was I couldn't visit all of you. No los pude visitar a todos en los breakout rooms, solo algunos, but I could listen to uh, some of you providing very good ideas. All what you need to do is to add a little bit more of a structure and you're good. You're good to go. So let's listen ideas about the first one. Imposing strict dress codes for students, guys. So what do you think about imposing strict dress codes for students? Any volunteer, any idea? And you can use the phrases, right? These phrases. These ones. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Uh huh. I don't. Okay, Gen C, tell me, please. Gen C, you raised your hand, but I can't hear your voice. Okay, teacher. Uh huh. Um, I think people should wear a helmet for their own safety. Oh, okay. You're talking about cyclists. Me está hablando de los ciclistas, ¿verdad? Gen C, can you hear me? Oops, I don't know what's happening with my mouse. Okay. Okay. No, no se escucha Gen C, creo yo. Okay. So, but remember that we are working with different situations that we have, okay? So, what about the first one? Anyone else? Eliu, tell me. Yes, uh, that's not a bad idea mm -hmm. to uh, impose, 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 uh, impose a strict dress code for for students. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that should be. Uh, better for the economy of uh, most families. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be because in our country, uh, not everybody has the opportunity to have many clothes, uh, ropa, many so, clothing, uh, clothing items. Clothing, clothing items. And um, The student that have two clothes uh, have uh, tiende, how, how can I say tiende? They uh, tend, tend to? They, right. they tend to, to uh -huh. feel bad with the other people that 
that dress that are changing every day their clothes. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, in, what, that is the reason that I said that is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I gave, I, I, in the other room, I was talking that I had the experience living in Chile one year mm -hmm. uh, and in all, in every public school, school uh, they use the, the same type of uniform. They wear, uh, they wear? They, they wear the same type of uniform, public mm -hmm. and private uh, schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, we can see how 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 the people uh, feel similar. I mean that the, the there was not bullying bullying for the the student that has uh, has more mm -hmm. opportunity to buy clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is my point of view. Okay, very good. I like it. Thank you so much, Elio. Excellent. So actually you use the, the full structure, right? So you introduce your opinion by saying that's not a bad idea, but I think it would be better for the family's economy, you said, right? So in this case, um, I agree with you. Actually, one of these days I was discussing that topic with my daughter, right? So um, uh, we were mentioning that, you know, unfortunately, bullying takes place, you know, in schools um, yes. when, whenever, you know, they are not wearing the brand that the rest, you know, are wearing. They mm -hmm. are not able to acquire that pair of shoes that are very expensive. They are not wearing, you know, probably the same uh, or similar outfits to um, impress others, right? So I totally agree. Very good. Excellent. Thank you, Elu. Anyone Thank else? You. Oh, you're welcome. Anyone else? Well, you can be in favor, you can be against, right? Another example from the ones that you discussed, right? Dígame, Stefania, Rebecca Stefania. Um, I don't know, uh, you have, you may have a point. Mm -hmm. However, I think to impose a strict dress code for the students can promote responsibility in the mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Also, if they have um and the street code they did they don't waste time thinking about what to wear for the for daily for every day mm -hmm. but in another hand we have cones that he mentioned mentioned after for mm -hmm. example if they have uh, imposed a dress code they it, it increase for the family because mm -hmm can be closely depending on how a street call is for every school. Mm -hmm. This is my opinion. Very good. I like it. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And yeah, I mean, actually you are offering your, your a different opinion and you are doing it just following the pattern and it sounds very smooth, right? Very polite. Se escucha bien, bien así, bien suave, bien bien amable porque lo está haciendo de la forma correcta. So you may have a point in you, right? Y todavía dice, ¿verdad? You may have a point in you. I like it. And, oops, you, right? However, I think it can promote responsibility among students. Okay, very good. Y aquí estamos usando siempre models in a different way, but actually it's okay, right? Um, then, I don't know, anyone else? Anyone else that would like to share their opinion? No one? Okay, what about the next topic? What about labeling CDs that have uh, offensive lyrics? What do you think about it? Any opinions? Oh, I'm sorry, Ana Francisca, to hear that. I hope um that is, that issue is resolved okay yeah 
It depends, Ana Francisca, because whenever you are in class, it is recommended probably not to use your Wi-Fi for, you know, Netflix or, you know, probably checking social media, right? So if you're using it for your class, you can ask your relatives or your family to stop using the Wi-Fi signal. So internet or internet, right? So you can uh, enjoy your class, right? And not having those type of issues. So anyone else, guys? Or do you have any questions? Alguna pregunta acerca del tema? Quedó un poquito más claro cómo usar las, las frases? Yes, of okay. course. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's move on. I know that we don't have that much time, but I would like to move to the next uh, topic on the agenda, right? So let me erase all my drawings. Let's see. Um, here. Very good. Now let's move. There is something that we mentioned before about question tags, right? And we were saying that question tags are, um, it's that question that we have in, also in Spanish, but the only difference is that in Spanish, which it is the same, for all the tenses, but in English, it's not. Actually, it's a based or according to the tense that we have and the verb that we're using. So there is a conversation here between Zara and Todd, okay? And um, I would like to have some volunteers if you wanna read. I'm going to read it first, listen to the pronunciation of the words, and then you are going to help me. Ay, que bien, tengo varias manitas, ya voy. Give me a moment. Eh, tengo ahí, voy a leer primero yo y luego ustedes, ¿verdad? Health insurance, childcare bills, rent. Now that I'm going to school and only working part-time, I have a hard time making ends meet. Health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? Yeah, my company used to pay for it when I was working full time. And childcare isn't cheap, is it? No, it's not. After I pay for rent and groceries, almost all my money goes to pay for my son's daycare. Colleagues should provide free daycare for students with children. I mean, colleges, I'm sorry. I think so too. But they don't have any services like that at my school. Poor, you know, Sarah, pobrecita Sarah, right? That's a problem with a lot of mothers that struggle with working, studying, and having children, right? So let's see. Uh, Rosa Maria and Rafael, can you help me, please? Eh, Rosa Maria, ayúdame con Sara y Rafa con Todd. Y luego Eliu and Jose Francisco. Ahí toman un rol cada uno, right? And then Claudia, you can help me, you know, to read. I can help you. Okay, so Rosa Maria and Rafael, can you begin, please? Okay. Hello, Rachel Bills. Ren, now that I'm going to school and only working part-time, I have a hard time making an ends meet. Health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? Yeah, my company used to pay for it when I was working full time. And child care isn't cheap, is it? No, it's not. After I pay for rent and groceries, almost all my money goes to pay for my son's daycare. College should provide free day, free daycare for a student with children. I think so too, but they don't have many services like that at my school. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Now let's listen to Eliu and Jose Francisco, please. Yeah, I am Sara. Okay, go ahead. Okay. okay. Health insurance, child care bills rent. Now that I'm going to school and only working part-time, I have a hard time making ends meet. Health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? Yeah. My company used uh, to pay for it when I was working full-time. 
in childcare isn't cheap, is it? No, it's not. After I pay my rent and groceries, almost all my money goes to pay for my son's daycare. Colleagues should provide free daycare for students with children. I think so, too. But they don't have any service like that at my school. Thank you so much, guys. And now let's finish with Claudia Marcela and Jose Jovito. So, Claudia, you me con Sara, and Jose, you me con Todd, please. Okay. okay. Health insurance, child care bills, rent. Now that I am going to go to school and only working part time, I have a hard time making ends meet. Okay, insurance is really expensive. It, it. Yeah, my company used to pay it when I was working for them. Our child care isn't cheap, is it? No, it's not. After I pay for rent and groceries, almost all my money goes to pay for my son's daycare. Coolish. Short project free day care for a student with a children. I think so too, but they don't have any services like that at my school. Okay, excellent guys. Thank you so much. In the while you were reading, I was sharing with you guys um some uh pictures, some Images that contain information that might be useful for you to have a better understanding about the question text. Okay, so thank you, everyone. Now, as you can see from the conversation, right? Sometimes we tend to use that uh, that tag, esa colita, decíamos nosotros en español, que es el famoso verdad que tenemos nosotros los hispanohablantes. So, for example, you can say something like el, exa el examen estaba difícil, verdad? So whenever you used, you know, question tags, it's whenever you are asking for agreement or conversation. Vean, los, vean las imágenes que les compartí. La primerita dice eso. Ahí estás hablando de las negativas, pero en realidad las negativas pasan a positivas y las positivas pasan a negativas cuando estamos hablando de question tags. Entonces, ahí está como el uso, right? Question tags are used when asking for agreement or confirmation. Ok, por ejemplo, si yo de repente digo, ehm, está bien bonita mi decoración, ¿verdad? Al preguntar yo, right, my decoration is beautiful, isn't it? Right, so that means that I'm asking for approval or for agreement. Yo busco que me digan, ay sí, qué bonita te quedó, está pero genial, right? ¿Verdad que sí? Entonces, when you use that tag question, it's because you want the, you're asking for agreement, you're asking for confirmation, you're asking for approval, right? Entonces, yo lo, lo utilizo para confirmar o para conseguir ese, esa, ese como acuerdo, ¿verdad? Estás de acuerdo conmigo, ¿verdad? Entonces, that's when we use tag questions, right? Also, one thing that we have to know is that we are going to use it based on the tense, ¿ok? Las tag questions se, se basan en el tense que estamos utilizando. Right? For example, if the sentence is in present tense, so my tag question is going to be in present tense. If the question is, I mean, if the sentence is in past perfect, for example, your tag question should be in, uh, in past perfect. Okay? And how does it work? ¿Cómo funciona, teacher? Bueno, si la oración es negativa, la tag questions va a ser positiva. Si la oración es positiva, la tag question va a ser negativa. Ejemplo, teacher, well, let's take a look at the conversation here. Okay, bye. For example, this one. Health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? Entonces, is, is in present simple, and then the tag question is in, in present simple. This one is affirmative, and this one is negative. When the sentence is negative, right, like in this case, childcare isn't cheap. Is it? The tag question is going to be affirmative, okay? So that's how it works, right? We need to be very careful, right, when, whenever we are 
um, using tag questions. Just pay attention to the tense that you're using. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for a moment and I'm going to pass the attendance. We're going to continue with this topic tomorrow. And also, I remember some of you were asking, right, for some links. No he olvidado unos links que, me, que habíamos acordado para, para Passive Voice. Entonces, mañana se los voy a estar mandando para los que puedan practicar. Los links que generalmente yo comparto no son tarea ni nada por el estilo, solo es para quien quiera practicar. Y les debo de... Passive voice y luego de tag questions, porque estos son dos temas que de verdad necesitamos practicar bastante para que nos quede como más claro. De acuerdo, así que voy a pasar lista, me voy a detener aquí un momento para que podamos ya ir finalizando. Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Here. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Carlos Antonio. Ah, sí, verdad. Creo que por ahí andaba. Eh, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Here. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Here. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Eh, no, no la escuché, quiero ver. Ok, siguiente, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Here. Thank you. Jenny Lisette Campos Martínez. No, ok. Um, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. ¿Cuál es el teacher? Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jose Ovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present, teacher. Thank you, eh, María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Okay, next one, uh, Marta Ruth Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, Nady Ivis Mendez Alveño. Present teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rebecca Stefania Pereira Flores. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. Present. Thank you, Ensurma Beatriz Present. Pérez Perdames. Thank you. Present. Gracias a ambas agencias. Okay. Vaya. Ok, so guys, thank you so much for joining today. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí hoy. Cualquier cosa, please let me know. Vaya, Rodrigo Antonio. Ya, ya ahorita ya le agregué la asistencia. Este, recordemos que ya son las últimas dos clases que nos faltan. Si usted tiene preguntas o si de verdad dice, mire, dicho yo este tema no lo entendí. Me lo puede explicar de nuevo con mucho gusto. Solo apúntelo y mañana pues lo podemos ver en la clase o me dicen en el privado, ¿verdad? Mi teacher puede repetir esa explicación y con gusto pues lo hacemos mañana. El día jueves nos vamos con una secuencia dentro ya del examen y pues también habrá espacio para preguntas y respuestas. So thank you very much for joining guys and let's meet tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.